This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the factors that affect enzyme activity. The activity of an enzyme depends on its tertiary structure, which is known as its conformation. As we saw in the previous video, the reactant molecule, the substrate, binds at the active site. The reaction is then catalyzed and the products are released. On the right, we have the bonds and interactions that are responsible for the enzyme's tertiary structure. These include hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic interactions or London dispersion forces, disulfide bridges, ionic bonds and peptide bonds. If the tertiary structure of an enzyme is disrupted, the substrate can no longer bind to the active site. This leads to a decrease in the activity of the enzyme. The loss of the tertiary structure is known as denaturation, which is irreversible. The factors that can disrupt an enzyme's tertiary structure are temperature, pH and the presence of heavy metal ions. We'll start by looking at the effect of temperature on the activity of an enzyme. From this graph we can see that as temperature increases, the rate of reaction also increases. The reasons for the increased rate of reaction are as temperature increases, the frequency of collisions between reactant molecules also increases. The second is that at higher temperature, there's a greater proportion of reactant molecules that have energy greater than the activation energy. So the rate of reaction increases until the optimum temperature, which is around 37 degrees C. And as we can see from the graph, the rate of reaction decreases rapidly after about 40 degrees C. Beyond the optimum temperature, the bonds and interactions that maintain the enzyme's tertiary structure are disrupted. The substrate is no longer able to bind at the active site, therefore the rate of reaction decreases. Lowering the temperature deactivates the enzyme and is reversible. The activity of the enzyme decreases, but the tertiary structure is maintained. This explains why keeping food in the refrigerator prevents it from spoiling or going bad. Next we look at the effect of pH on the activity of an enzyme. As we can see from this graph, the rate of reaction increases until the optimum pH. The optimum pH is the pH at which the enzyme is most active. Changes in pH can affect the charges on the acidic and basic groups of an amino acid. The enzyme's tertiary structure is disrupted and the shape or charge of the substrate can also be affected so that it cannot bind to the active site. Here we can see the optimum pH for two enzymes, pepsin and trypsin. Pepsin is more active in the stomach where pH is low. Trypsin is more active in the intestine where the pH is higher. Changes in pH can denature an enzyme in the same way as temperature by disrupting the bonds and interactions that are responsible for the tertiary structure. And finally, we look at the effect of heavy metal ions on the activity of an enzyme. Heavy metal ions, such as the silver ion, can react with a sulfhydryl group on cysteine, replacing the hydrogen atom with a heavy metal ion. Here we can see that the hydrogen atom has been replaced by the silver ion in the sulfhydryl group. The tertiary structure is disrupted and the substrate is no longer able to bind at the active site. 